Hello friends, welcome back to Science Land and today's topic is carbon cycle. So before we start the main topic, I would like to give you a little introduction about the nutrient cycles. So nutrient cycle is also known as Bio geochemical cycle. Now, why this word? Bio geochemical. Now, this is three words fused together biological factors, geological factors, chemical factors, and thus it gives rise to a word called bio geochemical cycle. Now, why nutrient cycle? Nutrient as in something which is giving energy or giving which is basic need of the organism, right? So Nutrient in terms of your elements, your basic carbon elements like your carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus. Okay, so these are the examples I'm giving you. Apart from carbon cycle, there are many other cycles, right? So we have nitrogen cycle, oxygen cycle, phosphorus cycle. So these are the elements and why they are known as nutrient. I'll give you another example. For example, a molecule called glucose. Now, glucose has two nutrients. What are these two? One is the carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. Okay. The another example I could give you is DNA. It has all these four nutrients in its molecule along with hydrogen so all five elements are there now glucose will further combine and give you a like your your daily food dna the main actor in a cell so it is basically a nutrient to you right so that's why it is known as a nutrient cycle your basic elements not the entire nutrient not the entire glucose is recycling no it's just the basic element like carbon nitrogen oxygen phosphorus these are recycling again and again okay now who invented carbon cycle so these two people discovered the carbon cycle joseph Priestley and anton la voisier okay so we look further now carbon as it is a basic nutrient why it is so important so carbon denoted by c it is present in all all the organisms like every organism has it in some form or the other so so the dry weight of the carbon in organism is 49 percent the rest other percent is your oxygen water molecule you know etc etc but carbon is 49 percent imagine it is so important to any organism correct so now let's start with the main topic of ours carbon cycle now two events are most important in this one is photosynthesis And respiration so now before that I would like to tell you few things okay the carbon cycle is recycled amongst few factors okay so these factors are biotic and abiotic factors biotic as in your biosphere Abiotic factors as your lithosphere, your hydrosphere, your atmosphere. Okay, so one thing again to keep in mind is the carbon or any nutrient in that case is recycled amongst two factors like biotic factors and abiotic factors. Okay, now let's start with the carbon cycle. We have carbon dioxide in the air, in the atmosphere plants 
use it right plants are living beings they use it they use it for two purposes either of the one actually they use it for both the purposes but interlinks are there right so either they you they will use it for photosynthesis or they will respire so i'm writing photosynthesis or respiration correct so now you have a plant it will use carbon dioxide and water to give you food right photosynthesis is a process in which a plant uses carbon dioxide and water to give you food plant is using the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and converting into some form of carbon which is your food your carbohydrates your glucose molecule whatsoever okay the other reaction is for respiration in the respiration process plant is using the carbohydrate and oxygen and it is converting the carbohydrate into gas again releasing it into atmosphere there are other factors which are for now not necessary to study in this carbon cycle right so these are the two processes so that is the first step of our carbon cycle now moving to second step now plants have used carbon dioxide they have made their food we will use the food prepared by the plants correct so animals as in your entire food chain or the food web continues after the plant has prepared that food the respiration reaction if it is given out in atmosphere well fine and good but if it has made food that food will also be used by the animals like entire food chain will continue now these animals are living beings obviously we have two options on every step so if an animal lives there is further entire events which take place and if it is dying or it dies in some case what are the further events to recycle the carbon okay so let's uh, take the first option of it is living so it is but obvious if it is living it will require oxygen and it will exhale carbon dioxide so respiration will take place correct so we have respiration if it is dying or it is dead then what if it is dead it is going to be buried so buried buried as in or burnt whatever uh, it is going to be in soil so the nutrients of the organism is going to return back to soil from or in the soil we have formation of fossil fuels so either the animal lives or dies there are separate events which recycle the carbon okay now what does fossil fuel from where did fossil fuel come into picture we we'll look that in detail now fossil fuel is the third step okay once fossil fuels are made what what is the next possibility again two possibilities again human beings are so greedy it will mine and it will take out the fossil fuel correct so mining takes place the fossil fuel are extracted and for our use they are burnt burnt in the sense carbon dioxide is released into the air correct now if it is not it is there in the soil for 
lots of years, what is going to happen? Is it going to be there in the soil for lifetime or something or the other might have happened so that the carbon is recycled? Now, the second option is if it is there in the soil, a process called subduction takes place. Now, what is subduction? Subduction is simply when, you know, earth has lots of plates, right? These plates keep on moving up and down, up and down, up and down. So ultimately, subduction will occur and it will reach to a point called mantle. What is mantle? Have you heard of mantle before? Like volcanoes erupt magma. From where does magma come? Magma is originated from mantle. Now what mantle is? We have earth. Earth's crust is here. The first one is Earth's crust. The second one is Earth's mantle. And the third one is core. Right? So, mantle is the second layer of the Earth. Okay? Now, so it reaches the mag mantle. After reaching the mantle, it has further two possibilities. Either mantle is going to give rise to magma and magma will erupt from volcanoes. Volcanoes erupt as in load of fire, smoke, carbon dioxide is released into the air. So the carbon dioxide is released into the air. Simple. If in an area a volcano is not present and that area's mantle has the carbon. What is going to happen? Weathering might take place. Like the mantle, the carbon content in the mantle will come up some or the other time, and it might uh, there might be soil erosion, which will ultimately take away the soil, or it might just be a normal uh, rain. The rainwater will carry the carry the dissolved soil or the dissolved carbon content with it and it will take further to oceans so lots of possibilities for now i'm just writing for example weathering takes place like heavy rainfalls and it is going to along with the rainwater that soil is going to absorb get mixed into the rainwater and it will further take into ocean right so one more thing i wanted to mention is ocean is known as carbon sink i'll tell you why very interesting that is so this is the third step of fossil fuel if it is happening what happens right now we'll continue from the ocean. So after the, that water has reached ocean, what is going to happen? Oceans, as I mentioned, it is a carbon sink. Now it has two possibilities. One that you know, run rainwater has carried the content, carbon content into the ocean. The second possibility is interesting. Now, we have oceans, atmosphere and ocean, okay? The carbon dioxide from the air is dissolved, okay, in the water. Now, if the carbon dioxide is dissolving in the ocean water, what is happening further? Two possibilities again. So the organisms 
known as phytoplanktons are autotrophs they make their own food just like plants they need carbon dioxide they need sunlight and thus in the ocean they live above the up, you know in the upper layers of the ocean not very deep because when you go inside the ocean the sunlight keeps on decreasing right so they need to prepare their food with the help of sunlight and they will remain in the upper layer of the ocean a phytoplankton use some part of that dissolved oxygen to make their own food phytoplankton are using them now the other whatever part is remaining from that entire 100% dissolved ox carbon dioxide it is used to make something known as calcium carbonate now what is calcium carbonate calcium carbonate is used uh, to make the shells it is used to make the skeletons and it is also used to make the reefs obviously it is used by the organism few or the other marine organisms might take up the carbon dioxide and they might use it for preparation of this molecule this molecule is very necessary so it is further used to make reefs and skeletons and shells by the marine organisms so that's the two possibilities thus ocean is known as a carbon sink the biggest like if you have any question asking you what are the two sources of carbon one is the ocean that is the biggest uh, you know amount like 80% if i have 100% 80% of the carbon is used to make calcium carbonate 20% is used by kerogens hence it is known as known as carbon sink uh, the other source of carbon is fossil fuel so these are the two major sources so that is the main in depth explanation of the carbon cycle so now this is the diagrammatic representation of the carbon cycle so we have carbon dioxide molecule in in the atmosphere plants have a process called photosynthesis they use the carbon dioxide to make the food now the food is used by the animals in the form of food chain of food, food web if the animal lives respiration takes place if it is dying fossil fuels are forming obviously after burying them or burning them into the soil Now fossil fuels like what fossil fuels you have coal you have natural gas you have lots of fossil fuels that is formed after formation of fossil fuels there are two further options industry as in the mining industry humans will take out the fossil fuel and it will burn them and after burning carbon dioxide is again released into the air if it is not uh industry it is weathering though it is not mentioned here and you could mention it like slash weathering uh, the soil erosion or the rain water takes place and then ocean comes into picture and then further carbon dioxide is released into the air so this is the gist in short the carbon cycle okay um, i hope you liked the video if this helped you do subscribe thank you so much for watching bye bye